Mark, we're hearing your story about how you became a government employee who took your work issue all the way to the U.S. Supreme Court. Uh, we just heard about how you were not a union employee, but you were being forced to pay what we call uh, agency fees to the union that had the collective bargaining agreements for the government employees in Illinois. Um, one of the things that happened there is these uh, fair share fees or agency fees, they were often being used to support political activities and speech that really went against things that you believed. So one of the first questions we want to talk to you about is um, what did it feel like for you to be forced to pay for political activities of an organization you weren't a member of and for things that you didn't believe? Well, quite frankly, I was upset. I mean, here's my funds uh, taken out of my paycheck, uh, and it's going to fund an organization that is setting policy, making policy, and uh, providing information uh, to its members that, quite frankly, I, I didn't agree with and that I wasn't, uh, uh, didn't want to be a part of. For example, endorsing political candidates for office at all levels, uh, from the city to the county uh, to the state and even on the national scene, um, and trying to tell me that I had to vote in a particular way because that's the candidate they endorsed, uh, which I didn't agree with. Everybody has the right to a private ballot uh, when they walk into the voting booth, but here was the pressure from the union with political information being put on my desk at work or emails that were sent uh, to me or flyers that were put in my mailbox you know by uh, union members and I, I just quite frankly felt violated in some in in a many different types of, of various uh, ways it's interesting hearing your take on that when i was running for u.s senate there were so many times I encountered workers who would say, oh yeah, you should know my union is supporting your opponent, but I don't know anybody in the workers who support your opponent. We're all voting for you. I'm sorry that our, our union leadership is supporting your opponent and our money's going that way, but don't worry about it. All of us are voting for you. So it's exactly like how you're describing. I think it's important to share that, you know, Nikki and I don't oppose unions. They serve an important role for workers' rights. My dad was a union employee his whole career. But also, as part of that, unions are supposed to protect and represent workers, and that includes protecting their constitutional rights. And First Amendment rights don't get surrendered simply because you accept a union job or a paycheck. So we should all be standing with every worker who wants to control how their paycheck is used. That's what workers are supposed to have protected, especially their paycheck. So as your story progresses in your situation, the governor of Illinois ends up suspending the collection of these agency fees, the thing that was coming out of your paycheck from non-union members, which applies to you directly. Um, when he did that, tell us what happens in your situation. Does the union just follow the executive order of the governor and stop collecting agency fees or start seeking consent from you in order to continue collecting agency fees? What practically happens when the governor makes that move? Well, what, what he did is, is he filed his own case against the union, but when it got into court... Uh, the court said that he did not have standing because being a public official, such as a governor, he was not having to pay any of these uh, fees, agency fees or otherwise. So the, the court felt that because he didn't have standing, that's where then my case uh, came to the forefront. And the case that we filed at the, at the federal level in Chicago, uh, at the circuit level, uh, was allowed to stand, if you will, and was allowed to continue because I was a union payer, even though I did not want to be, you know, a union member. Uh, so therefore, it was there was that um, idea that the court could continue to hear my case and how we continue to pursue it and continue to argue it. Mark, let me ask you 
following up on that, I, I have another question, but I think this is an important setup for the question I'm going to ask. How did they identify you or how did hmm. you yourself get involved in this uh, in this issue? Because it theoretically could have been anyone who shared your your views and your concerns. So how did you get um, into this mix? Was it something that you sort of raised your hand and said, hey, uh, I volunteer me or were you approached? How did that all happen? Well, it was somewhat of a com uh how shall I say, a combination, if you will, uh, Nikki. What happened was um, I had an attorney friend of mine that knew I was very upset with the, having to pay these union agency fees, hmm. even though I was not a member. Uh, he put me in contact with the folks at their Liberty Justice Center. Uh, they're a public interest law firm, and they fight for people's First Amendment rights. Uh, we began a conversation, a dialogue, and came to the uh, agreement that they would represent me uh, in filing a case against AFSCME, and that's and it's an acronym, but it's the American Federation of State, County, and Municipal Employees, and they are one of the largest public sector unions in, across the United States. Uh, we filed our case uh, and in the federal court in Chicago. Um, and of course, we promptly lost, which was very disheartening. And uh, and I thought, well, okay, this is over with. We then said, no, that or they told me it was good because then we could go on to the appellate level, and we lost there also. Um, so I'm, now I'm getting really discouraged. Well, then they said, oh no, this is good. We're going to go to the Supreme Court. And that's where I kind of had to sit down and take a deep breath because I said, we're going to Washington, D.C. <laughs> and the United States Supreme Court with this case. And they said, oh, yeah, yeah. And we think we have a good chance of winning. Mm. Oh, that's 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 so cool. A lot of people, Mark, would have just let it go. Just to be honest, <laughs> they would have just said to themselves, this this just isn't worth yeah. the risk or the fight. I don't want to risk my career. I don't want to uh, risk the disapproval and the conflict with my colleagues, you know, at work or other union uh, members. Better just keep my head down, collect my paycheck, suck it up, and you know, push through, and then take my retirement on on the other end. Why? Why ultimately did you say, you know what, no, I'm going to take a stand here um, because even though this organization is immensely powerful and this could really cost me, I believe this is important enough that it's worth the risk. What was it that, that got you to that point? Was it just having an organization say, hey, we will represent you pro bono? Um, what led you to that ultimately? Well, I think a, a big part of it was what I saw within state government and the office that I was working. And I saw people that could not do their jobs, but they could never get fired, even though their supervisor had a stack of, of uh, information that if it was in the private sector, or American business, they would have been long gone. But the union comes in, they protect them, you know, and they stay in those jobs. Well, then I also saw other people, you know, that plain just were sloths. And, uh, yeah, they did the minimal amount of work, just enough to get by, but they really weren't doing the job to their utmost to what they were designed for. And then I saw lots of other things going on. And the bottom line was is that if I was a taxpayer and I saw all this waste going on and I taxes are going to these people that aren't doing their jobs, I, I would be incensed. And of course, it's a common, uh, how shall I say, common knowledge that, that government is very wasteful. Um, and I think we all know that, but nobody really gets down to the bottom line as to how come it's wasteful. What happens with your tax dollars that when you pay your taxes, uh, where they go? And I think a, a really good uh, book that everybody should read is not accountable. And it's by uh, Phil Howard. Um, he documents immensely 
the waste of government and how government union contracts, uh, you know, are so in, in, how shall I, I'm trying to search for a word here. Um, they go down to the minutia that a supervisor can't even, you know, do any kind of supervision of his workers because it would then go, may go against a contract. Um, mm. It might be kind of a long-winded response to your question, but over all of those things is what got me, you know, my dander up and, and got the hackles on the back of my head and said, this has just got to stop. We, we cannot continue down this path. We just can't. Hmm. It sounds like if we were to sum up the story, you would say paychecks are worth protecting. Workers' paychecks are worth protecting. And uh, where your dollar goes, this dollar, that $10, this $10, it actually makes a difference. We saw that recently with people's choices to stop supporting Bud Light, right? Everybody's micro choices actually had a macro consequence. And you came to that conclusion years before. If I take a stand for my micro paycheck, it actually represents a macro decision.